Hey guys, so I just got back from the theater from seeing uh, The Current War. Um, yeah, I'm surprised I had this movie too. Um, I mean, this has out, been out, what, a few weeks? Uh, I looked up, it came out like, um, like right before Halloween. Um, and for some reason, my theater's now getting it. Of all fucking movies, like I said, we haven't gotten stuff like Judy, never got Peanut Butter Falcon, um, even we haven't got Parasite yet. Uh, probably won't get it, but hey, we gotta have fucking Kurt War, man. This Kurt War fans really are clamoring for that fucking movie. Uh, although I wasn't the only one in that theater, surprisingly. They put it all the way in the back like, of the f fucking uh, movie theater, like, uh, like the really smallest theater in the whole uh, auditorium. So, anyways, I, yeah, I, to my surprise that I, I was surprised that I got this. Um, I didn't know, I, I mean, I don't think this movie's been doing that well and, and enough that, like, my, I didn't think that my theater would ever get this. They didn't get it opening weekend. And, uh, and I, like, it's one of those things, like, you've almost forgotten that was something that existed. Because, like, and, I, and there's probably a good reason for that. Uh, because here's the thing with this movie that was really confusing going into this fucking thing. I don't know if anybody else has talked about this, I, and how many people have talked about this, but if you don't know, if you go to go see this movie, it's listed as the current war director's cut, to which I was like, what the fuck? Like, is there, like, a regular cut I never knew existed that came out before this? What the hell? Like, I didn't know this movie even came out before. Uh... And I'm like, that's weird, because usually when directors, there's anything called a director's cut, it's usually when when a movie gets released on DVD, and it's like a new, a different version of a film, and when it gets released on DVD, with like additional scenes or something like that. Um, but no, this is the first time I've known any mo like, uh, movie being released in the theaters being called a director's cut. And I was like, what the hell's the story behind this? Like, was the director pissed off? Or No, there is a reason. Um, there's a fucking reason behind this. Uh, basically, this movie was supposed to come out in 2017. What the hell? And it was actually out on film festivals in 2017. But there was only one little tiny problem. That wasn't the movie's actual... It wasn't the movie's fault. Uh, it was just a horrible circumstance. I... Uh, in that it was going to be originally released by the Weinstein Company. I think you can tell why this movie didn't get released in 2017, like November 2017, under the Weinstein Company. Pretty much nothing was. Uh, I don't think I have to tell anybody, unless you've been living under a rock. Uh, and if you have it, if you have been living under, under a rock since 2017, uh, Google it. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. So, yeah, I... So, then this movie just got shelved and failed to find anybody to release it for, like, two years until, like, Scorsese, I think, got involved in it. And then the director had a, found a clause where he had final cut uh, privileges. So, he decided to just cut this fucking movie, like, by ten minutes and add additional scenes or something like that. That's what I read. And then he, so he decided to call it a director's cut. I'm like, okay. Whatever. It's like, and like I guess I, this is a movie that I, I don't had no heads or tails about it. It, it sounded interesting. It had a great cast. Um, one of those movies, like, you can tell it's being released around this season to try to maybe get some Oscar buzz, but it's not been getting really good reviews at all. Um, to which I was surprised, but, uh, you know, I, I talk about the, I probably, you know, people wonder why the hell I talked about the uh, whole issues with this movie go, going into release, what this has to do with anything, what, anything. well, you know what, that's probably the more inter most interesting thing about this fucking movie, because this movie is boring, <laughs> god, okay, I was fucking dead tired going to see this movie, I barely, like, I, I just got, I got off of work, and I barely stay awake at work. That was a bad idea to see this fucking movie. I didn't realize this movie was going to be as boring as it was. I had trouble staying awake 
for a majority of this fucking thing. This movie was boring as sin. It's it's a shame because it's well it's well acted, but it's a fucking also a mess of a fucking movie. Um, this is really there's one positive thing I can say about it is it is well acted. It's got a lot of great actors in it. Um, I love Benedict Cumberbatch in this movie. If there's one thing I can take big takeaway positive takeaway I could say about this movie is Benedict Cumberbatch is really good in this. Uh, he's always fucking good. Damn, he's a really good actor, as it is. Um, and, like, as, uh, Thomas Edison, who was kind of a dick. <laughs> like, apparently, according to this movie, he was kind of a dick and was, did some seedy shit. Uh, I, I believe I've heard that before, and I, I, <laughs> I believe that is true, that he was kind of an asshole. <laughs> and, uh, kind of got what he deserved <laughs> in some ways. He honestly kind of don't root for him that much in this movie because you're kind of glad that he kind of doesn't, or he, uh, things don't go his way exactly, even though at the end of the day he's considered, like, the more famous, probably, of the three of between him, George Westinghouse, and Nikola Tesla. Everybody remembers more Thomas Edison than anybody when it comes to, like, electricity and shit like that. Um, I think he's a more bigger name, I'm just saying. Uh, probably Tesla a little bit more or is up there too, but uh, but he was not, yeah, like he was kind of a seedy asshole, and I liked it. Benedict Cumberbatch was great. Uh, like you, you get to, like he's he's he is, he is acting his ass off in this movie. Um, it, Michael Shannon's like the uh, it's the second most screen time in this fucking movie. He is really good in this. Like he is like the, probably the person you root for the more out of anybody in this fucking movie. Um, and I, like I said, I like, as George Westinghouse, um, I like my, I, I like Michael Shannon as a fucking actor. He's a really good actor. Uh, Nicholas Holtz in this movie. Uh, yeah. When I say Nicholas Holtz in this movie, you almost forget he's in this fucking movie because he disappears for a majority of this fucking movie as Nikola Tesla. Literally, like, I fucking forgot he was a fucking character sometimes in this movie because he will f he fucks off for like long periods of time in this movie and then doesn't show up until the last half of this movie. You're like, oh yeah, he's in this movie. Uh, hi, Nikola Tesla. Nicholas is a whole. Um, yeah, that's a big problem with this movie is that you can tell this has been edited down like a lot. Like th this has been heavily edited. Like there's like big spans of gap of time that. Seem to be missing stuff. Will seem to be fucking missing. Like what you know, Nikola Tesla will be gone for a long time, but you really don't know what the fuck he's been doing it since then. Um, I mean, I guess you should know because if you know the history, if I guess if you're supposed to know the history, so you know they don't want to explain it to people. Well, not. I'm not the most. I'm pretty certain most people that are seeing this probably don't know everything about all these guys. So maybe kind of clue us in, people. Um, uh, yeah. Like I said, this movie, you know what this fucking movie reminded me of? And I feel bad even comparing this movie. Because this movie is better than the movie I'm about to compare it to. But it's like, what? Like, it's like the, the most, it's about close to me watching The Snowman. Remember that piece of shit? Or... I barely could stay awake for that piece of shit. That movie had a lot of editing problems, even though that movie's editing problems were a lot worse than this. Uh, at least this movie had some co what of a coherent story. The fucking Snowman had zero coherent story. Uh, but this movie, I had more, about as much trouble staying awake watching this fucking movie as I did the Snowman. So I don't know what the hell is that tells you about this fucking thing. Um, and it's sad because it's not a bad story. I think it's just horribly told and just not interesting. Like, it's just so goddamn boring. Um, it is well acted. Uh, I didn't say that about it. Uh, like I said Benedict Cumberbatch is really good, and I really don't have much to say about this fucking thing, because it's not... I, it, I, there's not much to say about it. Uh, it's probably been one of the shortest reviews I've done in a while. So there you go, people. Um, so... What the hell I got this? I still got, uh... 
I don't recommend it. It's I don't recommend the current war. Don't fucking watch it. I, I, I maybe if I watch it with a little bit more sleep in me, maybe I'll like it more. But I highly doubt it. Uh, highly doubt it. Uh, but that's as far as that movie goes. I got. Even though I didn't go see a double feature today, I'm gonna probably be seeing one tomorrow of uh, Charlie's Angels and uh, or well, Good Liar and Charlie's Angels, and the two big hits of the year, the weekend. Um, and I do also want to see sometime this week Ford versus Ferrari. Uh, but until then, I'll talk to you guys later.